let's have a look at proof. Proof is quite a daunting topic. It's getting into real type of math, so it'll be very useful for the future. But it's also extremely satisfying when you get the answer because you know what you've done and you just it just feels really good. So I'm gonna give you some facts and I'm gonna prove some exam style questions so we can also all feel good when we get the answer in the exam for our proof questions. It's also slightly different to the other type of topics. Right, that's enough of that. Here we go. So what we need to know, for example, any even number can be written as 2n, where n, that means n is an integer, okay? So, for example, if we look at our number line, we can kind of see this quite clearly. And it's kind of, we kind of already know this fact. So, um, let's take n is 0. Well, by n is 1, we get 2 times 1, which is 2, which is even. If we take n as... 2, we're going to get 2 times 2, which is 4, which is also even. So that's how you'd write an even number. But it's, um, an even number is a multiple of 2. So we kind of want to make a note on the side that, yes, that is how you do an even number. But let's say I wanted a multiple of 3 or 4. So any multiple of 4 can be written as 4 times n, where n is an integer. Just, um get that bit if you want, it's just quite good notation. And let's say we were looking, another important fact is 2n plus 1, where n is an integer, it's very even here, is a way you can write any odd number. So we've basically got all the even numbers we just found, add 1, we're going to get the odd numbers. Another useful point is consecutive numbers. If we have n, the number n, if we do n plus one whole number, that's the next one along, n plus two, next one along. If you want um, consecutive numbers, if you wanted consecutive even numbers, instead of plusing one, you're going to have to plus two. So you would have two n, so we start with an even number. Then the next even number along would be 2n, that even number that you were already on, so let's say here, and then you're going to have to plus 2. And then the next one would be the one you started on, and then you've already plus 2 to 4, for example, you have to plus another 2, so plus 4, for example. So there's some very important key pieces of info we're going to need to practice our proof questions. Get rid of the number line. So hopefully those ideas make sense to you. So an even number is two times something. An odd number is two times something plus one. Right. I don't know whether to leave, we'll leave those there for now and then we'll see how much room I have. So one of the, so we're gonna go into exam questions. I quite like some of these and a lot of, um, the similar ideas come up, so if you know how to do these, it's going to be very helpful. It's just it's kind of a similar way, but they change the numbers. So I want to prove all of these are proving the sum. So the sum is adding of n plus two times n plus one, and n plus two is square. Okay, so it says prove the sum, so just a sensible idea would be to sum those, these two parts, and we'll deal with the fact it's square a bit later. So let's just see what happens if we sum these. So we're going to have n plus 2, n plus 1, plus n plus 2. So let's now expand this um, bracket out, so I'm going to go that times that, which is n squared, that times that, plus n 
plus 2n and that times that plus 2. Not forgetting this n plus 2 at the end. So now let's collect like terms. So we've got a uh, squared there. We've got an n, an n, and an n. So we've got 1n plus 2n plus n. So that's plus 4n. And we've got a 2 and a 2. So plus 4. Now we want it to be, um, we want to prove that it is square. So you're always going to try to think of the end goal you're trying to get to. So we want something that we can square. So we kind of want to get this into one bracket. And the numbers kind of look quite nice and that is possible to do. And so a square is something times itself. So you know you're going to have to get it into two brackets because we're going to factorise. But the brackets are going to be the same. So in this case we're going to have n plus 2, n plus 2. So that is the same as n plus 2 times by itself. So there we have shown that it's squared. So always think about that end goal. You need your first starter step, which you normally get from the question, and then you always need to be aware of your end goal. And to show something squared, you need to show that it's something times itself, and then write that it's squared. So that's an example of if you're trying to show something is squared, you're probably going to have to factorise it into two brackets that are the same, because there's normally an annoying n involved. Um, number two, prove 2n plus 3 squared minus 2n minus 3 squared is a multiple of 12. Okay, so this um, leads to this fact here. So a multiple of 12, the end goal, I'm going to write it here, end goal is 12 times something. Now something doesn't have to be an N, it can be an M, it can be any letter, it can be more than a letter, it just has to be 12 times something. So you need 12 bracket something in the bracket, an integer in the bracket. Um, and that is because the sum, difference and product of integers or whole numbers is still an integer. So if I, had, if I was summing two whole things, I'm going to end up with a whole thing. And if I was subtracting two whole numbers, I'm going to end up with something whole, the same with multiplying. Okay, back to this. Prove this line here is multiple of 12. So we have our start goal, which is this line here, our start, and our goal, multiple of 12. Okay, so let's just go with the start. 2n plus 3 squared, so I'm going to write it like that. That times itself. 2n minus 3 times 2n minus 3, so I got the root machine, that times that, 4n squared, that times that, 12, plus 6n, this times that, plus 6n, 3 times 3, plus 9, minus, now whenever there's a minus be careful, I'm going to add brackets into this bit, that times that is 4n squared, that times that is 2n times minus 3, which is minus 6n, 2n times minus 3 is minus 6n again, and minus 3 times minus 3, two negatives make a plus, plus 9. Okay, let's get rid of this. We've got 4n squared, we've got 6n plus 6n, so I'm just going to put that as 12n plus 9, minus, expand this bracket, 4n squared, well, inside we've got minus 6n, minus 6n, so I'm going to change that, cheating a bit here, minus 12n, so we've got minus and a minus is a plus, plus 12n, minus and a plus, plus a minus, minus 9. Okay, let's collect like terms. Oh, I've changed the shape. Those, so those cancel. Let's look at the n's. We've got 24n. And the 9 plus 9, minus 9. Okay, and we are not done because it says a multiple of 12. Therefore, we need 12 times something. So if we take out, we need 12 bracket something. We know that 24, 12 can go into 24. And here, we've got a whole number. So it doesn't really matter what's in here. We know it's 12 times something multiple of 12. That little square shows you've completed the proof. 
Okay. Let's go with all that hard work. So that's an example of if you have, it can be six times, a multiple of six, you'd have six bracket something. If it's even, you're going to have two brackets something. You've just got to basically think about the end goal. Okay, next question. We want three consecutive odd numbers is a multiple of three. So this is your start bit, three consecutive odd numbers, this is your end goal, a multiple of three. So we're going to use two points from here. So three consecutive odd numbers, oh, we're going to use them all. So this is an odd number, this is consecutive. So let's pick... Two n plus one. Let's just we're going to draw a number line out here. Okay, so let's say let's say we start with n is zero. That would be two n so two n plus one, so we're starting at one. Then we want two n plus instead of one we're gonna add three so it's been like so here we've got the um, even version so you add two each time so there are consecutive um, odd numbers you can test that by saying n equals one then that would be one n equals zero that would be 2 times 0 plus 1, that would be 1. 2 times 0 plus 3, which would be 3. So then you've got this one. And 2 times 0 plus 5, this one, which are consecutive odd numbers. Okay. I think when it says 3, I haven't written the full question out here. I guess we're summing them. So let's put these, let's sum these all together. My first odd number, my second odd number, my third odd number. Okay, let's collect like terms. That seems to be the only thing we can do here. So we've got 2n plus 2n plus 2n. So we've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6n. We've got 1 plus 3, which is 4, plus 5, which is 9. Okay, now I'm going to think about where I actually want to end up. And I want to end up with a multiple of 3. So I want 3 times something. I notice that 6 and 9 do go into 3. So th if I factorise that with a 3 outside, I'm going to have 2n plus 3. And I'll show you, now if I expand that out, I'll show you that I do get that answer. So that would be 3 times 2n, 6n, and then that times that. So that is the correct factorisation. So we've shown that's a multiple of 3 because it's 3 times a whole number. similar to showing it's a multiple of 12. So three brackets, a whole number, and we know that um, a whole number times a whole number is still a whole number. If that's relevant, what am I on about? Okay. We've got one more, one more question. So it says sum of squares of any two positive, that means positive by the way, even integers is a multiple of four. Sum of squares of any two positive even integers is a multiple of four. From this, right, we've got, this is our starting point, sum of squares of any two positive even integers. Let's find two positive even integers. That's positive even integer 2m. That's also a positive even integer. The n can be called anything. And now I'm calling it m. So it says sum of squares. So just following the sign point, I'm going to sum them and I'm going to square them. So we've got 2n squared plus 
squared. Let's change pens. So that is 4n squared plus 4m squared. Maybe these letters are too similar, it's going to get confusing. It's a multiple of 4. So that means we need 4 times something. As we can see in this case, it's quite easy to pull out the factor of 4 n squared plus m squared. So that's showing that it is a multiple of 4 and you've done the proof. Let's just check if we expand that out, we do get back to this and we factorised it correctly. 4n squared. Okay, so we factorised it correctly and it's showing it's 4 times something. So it's a multiple of 4. There is another form of proof which is called proof by contradiction. I'm going to add that here, proof by contradiction. This is kind of like someone telling you a statement. So let's say you were just debating, arguing or something, and you wanted to say, no, they're wrong. So you give them maybe a statistic, or you tell them some example of where that hasn't happened, or you'd be like, oh, well, I had a friend, and uh, they said that that didn't, blah, blah, blah. But we're going to do that with maths. Way more fun. Okay, so for example... And we do it in a question, and it's going to be if x is greater than y, greater than, because I always think of this as it's got the bigger gap, so it's greater than, then x squared is always bigger than y squared, it's not even equal to, bigger, okay. You might look at that and think, yeah. Let's test a few numbers. So let's say x is 1. No, let's say x is 2. And y is 1. Then 2 squared is bigger than 1 squared. That's correct. If we have x is 3, y is 1. Then x is bigger than y. As 3 is bigger than 1. And if we do x squared, which is 3 squared is bigger than 1 squared. Okay, that looks all fine. But with square numbers, it's quite tricky. So one thing to always think when you see a square number is plus or minus. Like, they'll always try and trick you with this. So 1 squared is 1, but minus 1 squared is also 1. So same with any number. 4 squared is 16, and minus 4 squared is also 16, so there's always the negative um, version. So, if we use this fact, so bearing in mind I'm thinking about proof by contradiction, I'm trying to think of an example where this wouldn't work to prove that, no, that can't be the case. If I take x, hmm, not choosing that, if I ta take x, so I would just say a tip to know what to do this is that when you're checking examples of numbers, maybe use some positive, some negative, maybe test zero, do things like that, don't just test your standard numbers, go a bit wild and wacky and head over to the negative side. If I take x equals minus 1 and y equals minus 2, still quite simple, just negative, then I'll check this fact, if x is bigger than, greater than y, so minus 1 is greater than minus 2, that's correct, because the number line. So minus 1 is bigger than minus 2. Then x squared is greater than y squared. Minus 1 squared is 1, is greater than minus 2 squared is 4. Um, um, help, help. That is not correct. So, do you want to put a line through that? No. And then I would write contradiction. So then you know that it is not the case. So yeah, when you're doing those, it's first square numbers, think about involving the negatives. And just in general, when you are testing numbers for things like proofs, maybe test positive numbers and negative numbers, change just stick to the, to your nice favourite numbers, my favourite number is 6, don't just stick to 6.